Welcome to The God Room with Danny Hobble. Danny's art ministry has touched millions of people around the world. For the past four decades, Danny has shared his talent by spreading the Word of God through art. Join us now as Danny shares his inspiration behind the talent in The God Room. The God Room is not really a room per se. It's not like a, um, uh, a shrine or something you know, with a whole bunch of statues and beads and all this kind of stuff. Um, the God Room is really just a quiet space alone with God. Again, you got to have a God Room as you're walking down a path of woods, or your God Room could be in the car as you're driving someplace where it's just you and God. Wherever it's just you and God and you spend a long time with the Lord, that is your God Room. Um, we have a, a, our own God room kind of set up. It's just um, a place out in the lie. It's just outside the house where there's no phones, there's no uh, computers, uh, you don't have kids running around, whatever. It's just real quiet time, which is you know, for us is outside on our back porch, Lil and I, and uh, that is our God room. But a lot of times, again, you know, I might be driving in a car, and at that point, that's my God room. It's just your alone time with God, and. He showed me the importance of that right after my operation. And that's kind of what I wanted to get into today was is to walk you through a little bit of that to show you just how good our God is and how wonderful that he really is. I mean, when we when we started, actually just, just before uh, the operation uh, took place. Which was uh, about or, two years ago. Yeah, about yeah. two years ago. Um, you know, we were having some, some financial difficulties and it was it was like we barely could keep our head above water and as a matter of fact the place that we were staying in um, it, our finances got so low we couldn't afford it anymore and so we were kind of forced to move and through the whole thing um, we kept praying I mean I know you know you were praying about it and I was praying about it and it just seemed like the more that we prayed it seemed like the lower my finances were getting you well, know, you we, we were praying for provision and praying for business to improve and all the things that you would naturally think would be the way to pray. Right. But like you said in the past, that you did always say, Thy will be done. So this is a pathway that he, the Lord took us down of Thy will be done. So it was his, his way of maneuvering things to get something much better out of the situation. Well, what, and, and that's true, but what we didn't realize was the fact that as we were praying, because we were, you know, when, uh, kind of like what, what, what my wife was saying, um, you know, in the normal we think, oh, if you're low on finances, yeah. you pray for more finance because that's what you need. And the more we were praying, you know, God help us, God was saying, oh, okay, mm -hmm. and he took more finances away, not knowing what his goal was. And the more we prayed, our finances got worse and worse and worse. And so, you know, it crossed my head. I don't know if it crossed yours, but it crossed my head at one point where I just said, you know, I don't know if I want to pray anymore about it. Because it seems like the more I was praying, the worse it was getting. So, you know, I, I just don't want to pray anymore about it. Yes, and, and I saw you get discouraged. You, yeah. You really hit a low there of discouragement, and you had a battle going on. And during that time, you know, of prayer, I think was when you began to truly surrender it to God. Yeah, and like I said, you know, it, it got to that point to where, you know, I was, I was just saying, well, I don't even know if I want to pray anymore. And I guess it was the Holy Spirit's conviction it was just saying more or less like, you sure you want to do that? You know, and I got thinking about it. It's like, no, I've been down that road before. Yeah. I mean, I've been walking with the Lord for like 40 years and I've messed up quite a lot. And I've been down that road before where I just said, okay, fine, God, you don't care. I don't care and walked away. And it never turned out to be good for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I got spanked and smacked around until yeah. I finally came back and to submission. It was submission. a time where God or the Holy Spirit was bringing you to a place of confirming your faith. And our faith mm -hmm. can't truly get confirmed until we hit a time in our lives where we need to truly 
all the things we've told other people when they're in a hard position. Yeah. And it was so easy for us to give them the advice of just pray, just have faith. Well, God brought us to a, co- a crossroad. And during that time, your faith was confirmed. And I know you well, want to talk about that. Yeah, and you know, that, that is one thing that, you know, as, as, as Christians, you know, we know the Bible, we hear sermons every week, and it's like, you know, we know what to say, we know the right thing to do, and it's easy to tell other people. It's even easier to tell ourselves, oh, we need to pray more, whatever. But when you're faced with situations, when the rubber meets the road, as they said, mm-hmm. you know, that's the true test of, well, where is your faith at? And I was at that crossroads. And the one Bible verse that hit me was uh, in Job thirteen fifteen, where it says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I just couldn't get away from that verse, and, it, and I said, well, Lord, I'm going to hold on to that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to cling on to that, and that's what we need to do, you know, is we got to hold on to God's promise and say, I'm going to hold on to this promise, and, you know, if my finances fall and we just get thrown out on the street, so be it, but I'm going to hold on to that and continue to pray. Mm-hmm. And it was right after that we made that commitment and said, we're standing fast and we're standing on God's word that he's going to take care of us. I don't care what the situation is. Then all of a sudden things started happening. You could start off with that. Well, you, your first thing was meeting. Then the next day you had that meeting well, of the I church had, meeting. I had uh, met Patrice probably a month before that. And uh, we had a woman's Bible study at our church. And one day the uh, leader of our Bible study, Oneida, decided to pair us up. And we were to go somewhere with a, a certain person and talk about the needs of each other and pray for each other because she wanted us to grow. And I did not know Patrice personally, but she picked Patrice. And during that time, we had a, a bonding time and we truly became sisters in the Lord mm-hmm. in an intimate way of, of two. You know, you're talking about God time in the God room. Okay, we had a, a place there in the sanctuary where we had our God time together as sisters okay. and there was a that connection was cool. that was made right there in prayer because I wasn't used to praying for someone out loud and at this time I had to yield and truly feel her need and she had to yield and, and, and feel mine and, and pray so during that time I think God really you know inspired us to become close friends and uh, over the course of time uh, when she began to hear about the problems we were having, she told me about experience that she had had, that the Lord sent her to Florida. She had lived in uh, Massachusetts. The Lord sent her to Florida specifically to help three men, and it would be three veterans. And the Lord had already provided the two, and she, God gave her the names. And she had already he had met those needs with two other people. And the last one on the list was, Dan. <laughs> Is this Dan. remarkable? This is how our God so, works. You know, so she was a very qualified in everything that has to do with uh, Social Security programs, veterans programs, everything for the needy. So she told us about a program that she was certain that you would qualify for. And um, so we looked in that and we got the name of the Social Security. You had a person of contact and we called her that day. And she had a meeting, there was a meeting set up for the, the next day and asked if we could come to that meeting to see if we would qualify for special assistance for veterans who are about to be evicted. So we went the next day and at that meeting we were approved. And not only approved, but we received the last voucher that was given in that program for that entire year. Now the remarkable thing is, say this whole process, we're talking about government, this takes months, at least six months for all this to happen. We had it happen one day after another, what, within, within three days we had our voucher. Yeah. That never happens, that takes at least six months to nine months if you get it. Mm-hmm. And we were the last ones that was left on that slot to get it. Right after we got ours, they shut the program down. They no longer have it. Yeah. I mean, this is how God works. It's just, you know, it, he had all this lined up. All he needed was for us to say, I'm standing with you, God. 
Thank you for joining us in the God Room. You can visit us at www.inspired-art.com or email us at inspired-art at comcast.net. Spend time in your own God Room daily. There is nothing more important in life than your personal relationship with God. Nothing.